So I was feeling like recording a vlog, but for some reason I'm feeling kind of shy today. <laughs> Introverted problems. I was actually looking back on some of my older ones from four or five years ago, and I thought it's not a bad idea to keep vlogging. I don't know why exactly I stopped doing it, because I did enjoy it. I guess life just catches up on you sometimes. And when you're preoccupied with a lot of other things, you can sometimes forget about what you enjoy doing. I'm also going to be a bit quiet when people pass because I'm a bit awkward still. I wanted to make a video talking about how things have been. I've been unemployed for about a little over a month now and I kind of wanted to talk about it. I don't know if this will help anybody else, but I guess you can know that you're not alone if you're in the same situation. It happens to all of us. Well, maybe not all of us, but it can happen. And I'm pretty sure it's happening for a lot of people right now. Sorry, I just got to pick up a chip. There's a lady going over there where I wanted to go, Fishka. Oh well. It was kind of crazy actually because I did a course on game design, working in video games, because I was really into like creative arts and computers and all that sort of stuff. So naturally I thought it might be a good idea to do coming out of high school. But then when COVID hit, it got kind of hard to, I guess, find work. A lot of people lost their work. And here I was just coming out of uni with no work experience. And here I was coming out of uni with a very niche degree. So I ended up just applying for whatever I sort of could at the time. And um, I ended up just doing data entry, which, well, they advertised it as data entry, but it ended up being a remediation project for a bank. And we were getting underpaid for that severely. The amount of work that we had to do and the amount of content that we had to learn for that job was nuts. But I stuck with it and I stayed there for about one and a half years and that was on a contract. So once that finished, I ended up, where did I end up? Oh, I ended up with another bank doing a very similar type work like remediation, which I was there for about six months when that contract ended. And I managed to get another job within that same bank, which I then stayed there for two years. And that's the job that I no longer have. It was also a contract job. So I suppose the thing you can learn from all of this is contract work. You can easily, it's not the most stable. Good girl, sit. Good girl. Free. Got to find the, pole, the ball amongst the poop bag. Ready? Yeah, and I, I really enjoyed that job. It was quality assurance, checking over people's work. It required a lot of problem solving and providing feedback and support for people. I got to work on some very cool projects and be involved in all the documentation and the writing up for all of that sort of stuff. And with each job that I took on, it all increased in pay as well. So every time I learnt more and more and moved on to the next role, it was a massive increase with each one. My first job, I don't know what it is, uh, annually, but um, I got $25 an hour for that job, which at that time I'm pretty sure was like minimum wage in Australia. And then by the end of my QA role, I got uh, a few promotions in that one, but I ended up going from like $25 an hour in my very first role to almost 50 an hour at the end of it, which I think comes out to around 100K a year. And I was, I was really happy about that. Like for me, that was such a big achievement. I think I was about 25 when I started earning 
And I think for someone my age within this current this current time, it was a pretty big achievement. But unfortunately, the contract ended and our whole team had to find new jobs. And at the moment, during this cost of living crisis, it's like the worst time to be job hunting. I feel like since I've been unemployed, I've been very close to securing jobs. But then they always turn around and say, there's always someone with slightly more experience and there's no other feedback for you. I don't want this to be a sad vlog or nothing like that, even though it's kind of going that way, but I just wanted to be able to talk about, you know, what I've been going through and how I'm sort of going. Pretty sour. Next week I have a job interview. Well, it's kind of an interview of sorts with a company, but it's not doing QA work. It's more of a call center type role, which the nature of the role is actually, it's, it sounds really challenging. It's not your typical call center role where you're cold calling. Um, it's a type of role where you help people. People are calling you for help. And that's sort of something that does align with my values. I do have that want to be able to help people. So I'm trying to keep an open mind about it. Calling and stuff, it's, it's not really something that everybody wants to do, I don't think. And with me being a bit more introverted, it is gonna be a challenge, but I wanna see it as like a, like there's a lot of skills that I'll be able to learn from this role if I get it that will help me become a stronger person. And that's kind of what I'm holding on to a little bit too, is um, wanting to self-improve, self-develop. I wanna come out of my shell a little bit more. I think life is a lot nicer when you can have good relationships with people, whether that's like family or friends or strangers. You know, the world needs a lot more friendliness and kindness and wanting to connect with one another. And I want to think that doing this type of role might help me open up to that kind of stuff a bit more. Because at the end of the day, you know, statistics show relationships and having good social connections is what makes you live longer. As long as you got your social network and a positive social network, then, you know, what else do you need, really? There's all these videos on loneliness and people are in their 30s and older and all of this sort of stuff and they've got no friends. There's only one way you kind of can make friends and that's talking to people. And that also means putting yourself out there sometimes. All right, I'm gonna put this ball away. Ugh. Enough. Oh, good girl. Good puppy. What is that, a milk bottle? Oh, we're pooping on the milk bottle, great. You know, this whole thing has sort of come at a awkward time for Nathan and I. Earlier this year, we bought our first home. Things are going really good. It's just that, yeah, like I said, at a very awkward time. And I mean, the good thing with Nathan and I is that we're okay staying indoors. I like going outdoors, but mind just taking her for a walk and it doesn't cost anything. Or well, having that interest in video games really helps. Having family that are happy to have you over. Ishka, come on. Good girl. Family that are happy to make you a meal every now and then. I'm so lucky I've got both my grandparents and they're both so caring for the two of us. I guess the other thing is keeping your expenses at a minimum. We're only paying our mortgage once a week. Bills when they come through, we choose to get one of those food boxes delivered and that really helps with keeping costs the same each week. And other than that, um, it's a really nice bush. I've always been a pretty good saver, so I, before all this happened, I saved up about 20 grand in an emergency fund. 
I've not had to use it yet because I've had savings on top of that. I would highly recommend doing those Ramsey baby steps for anybody who hasn't heard of the baby steps and how important it is to practice your saving habits. I got no idea where I'm going by the way. This is all new area to me. Saving up, I think it was like two or three months worth of your income as an emergency fund and then just working at your savings and because I've been able to do that even though I've been unemployed for over a month I do like I do have that feeling of like things are going to be okay and I think that's sort of what you want to keep on your mind is even though things are like not the best things will be okay I think the other Thing other than having like an emergency fund back up and some savings is obviously having the right partner that definitely brings out people's colors when it comes to financial hardship and things like that not to say that I'm necessarily in financial hardship but when people go through these sort of times where you can barely afford to actually live on only one income and your partner is unemployed or not getting an amount that is livable quote unquote it can definitely bring out a lot of stress in people because you don't want to just survive you know nobody wants to just survive people want to be comfortable and you know have a little bit extra to do things that you want to do I think the biggest thing for me has been Nathan has never pressured me in any bad way to get work because I put that pressure on myself already. Like I'm putting that pressure on myself already to make sure I'm applying for, well I used to apply for about two jobs each day where I could, though when I have interviews coming up I tend to slow down a little bit in hopes that I might get something. But at least applying for something a day. But yeah, I guess um, the good thing that has come out of this month of being unemployed is I've been trying to rediscover myself a little bit and it's been quite nice actually. Uh, I found that I used to stress a lot on the weekends because I wanted to relax. But then I also wanted to do things like cleaning up and stuff because you'd be working all week and then you'd spend the weekend cleaning up but then that would stress you out because you feel like you should be relaxing instead of cleaning but then if the cleaning doesn't get done you got a messy home and that's not good for you so then I'd spend it cleaning but then stress about not relaxing and then sometimes if I d decide to relax when other things needed to be done then that was a stressful thing as well I'd never be able to sleep in on weekends. I couldn't, unless I was like exhausted, being unemployed. I found that I've literally been sleeping in till 10 a.m., which is like a pair of pants, how cool. And then sometimes even 11 a.m., you know what? And it's actually been quite nice because I've had nothing on. Like I've not had to get up and worry about being somewhere on time, I've actually just been able to sleep. And that has honestly been so nice for me. I feel like I've been able to stress a lot less. Even though I'm unemployed, I'm also like learning to enjoy this time of not having the nine to five commitments. I've been able to do a bit more gardening, which is something that I like. I've been able to see my grandparents a lot more. I've got all my four set of grandparents on my dad and mum's side and they're all retired which is also very important to me that I get time to talk to them and be with them and all of that kind of stuff plus it gives you brownie points <laughs> favorite grandchild if you prioritize your grandparents <laughs> the other thing Oh, here we go, it's the garbage truck. Oh, noisy. Truck's noisy, birds are noisy. As I was saying, 
The other thing that I've been able to rediscover is the enjoyment I had for making videos. I was watching some older videos that I made and they were nice to reflect back on. And it's crazy to me to think that like my first dog vlog was like four to five years ago. And how if I'd kept consistent with that, like I wonder what I would be like today. I guess that's something that we always think about is, you know, if we kept up with this particular thing, where would we be now? Would we be better off? Oh, we gotta go. There's a car coming. Something that I noticed <laughs> is Ishka's leash walking skills. Back then, Ishka would pull on the leash so much. <laughs> Whereas, look at this, this is like, She's like keeping to my side. She's a relatively loose lead. She does walk a little bit ahead, but other than that, you know, here we go. We're sniffing something. Here I am trying to talk about how her leash manners are so nice and we're pulling to sniff. But yeah, anyway, her leash walking is a lot nicer now. Like I've got her on a flat collar. Sometimes I do have her on the head, Thing, that head halty thing but now she's like pretty good keep in mind she is uh, turning eight this year now and I don't know whether or not it's an older dog thing that they just walk better on a lead or whatever but we did also do a little bit of training so that could help but yeah I guess overall um, this whole unemployed thing hasn't been too bad for me I guess there can be some stigmatizing or something like that like here in Australia we have the dole which helps people who are unemployed currently I'd, I'm not on the dole I'm hoping that I can just find a job without needing to be on that for people here in Australia on being on the dole is not really like seen as the best type of thing but I don't know I think another nice thing is that my family haven't really bothered me too much about it like I mentioned earlier you know Nathan's been pretty good supportive wise he's not put too much pressure on me to push myself even more than what I'm doing and I think that for my type of personality like if people push me more on something I already know I need to do sometimes that can stress me too much especially if I'm pushing myself enough <laughs> I think Ishka knows we're close to home, so she's slowing down a lot. I don't know if this is going to help anybody per se, but I guess my closing off advice is going to be just take it one day at a time. Give yourself a routine if you can. Wake up at a time that's going to help you. Make sure that you keep applying for work. Sorry, had to pick up third poo of the day. Make sure you apply for a job or two a day, depending on your situation. There you go. Find time to do things that you used to enjoy doing or want to enjoy doing. You know, I mean, if you're unemployed, you got time to go places, man. <laughs> Next week, I've um, I actually set a challenge for myself and two of my friends, two of my old high school friends. For us to do by the end of the year though, since I'm unemployed now, I can take the opportunity to go do it. Uh, for one of my friends, uh, her task is to go to the cinema by herself, which is something that she's thought about doing, but needed the courage to do it. And so we've given her this task to, by the end of the year, she has to go to the cinema at least once by herself and watch the movie and and report back and see how she went. For me, it's to go on a hike on my own. Normally I always take Ishka along to do all these things and sometimes even going for walks, I can often think, oh, maybe I'm doing it more for her than I am myself. So next week I plan to go to Hanging Rock. Mount Macedon, I think it's called. Hanging Rock. So I plan to go there sometime next week go for a hike on my own and I might bring the GoPro along, we'll see. And that's without Ishka, so it's very much a do it on your own kind of thing. And um, my other friend, we've given her the task of organising an activity to do with her colleagues. <laughs> so 
you've got two of us who go do something on your own and not with people and you've got one friend go do something with people <laughs> uh, but anyway I think it's a good idea to try to set yourself some challenges especially while you're unemployed give yourself something to do give yourself something productive to do but also take time to relax put it down a bit so you can see Ishka but yeah just taking one step at a time and making the most of what opportunities you are given do put in a bit of effort yourself because things don't just come to you all the time you need to put in a bit of effort to make it work but I guess overall put in a plan for yourself that works for you that's a bit more sustainable it might not be the easiest to follow during this time on the amount I was earning combined with Nathan's income we were doing pretty well despite having a, a new mortgage with these current interest rate times it's it's definitely not sustainable to be on one income anymore anyway if you've got a dog go take your dog for a walk if you've got a cat and it likes going outside maybe take it for a walk if you don't want to go for a walk go stand outside in your backyard if you don't like the look of your backyard, do something about it. Enjoy your space, enjoy your time, and...